Quill's muscles ached and her eyes grew heavy. She decided it best to set up camp and rest before journeying on to the castle. Hey, kid. Good. You're alive. The starling spoke as it circled the campfire. Quill gasped in shock as the starling unveiled monstrous wings and curled horns. It descended, talons gleaming. Oh dear, I didn't mean to scare you. I'm not scared, Quill replied. I just didn't know starthings were feathered. This starving thing's gotta go, kid. The name's Adurin. No, we aren't feathered. Only me. I'm working on it. Let's just say choosing the wrong friends comes with the price. But you seem like a good friend to have. Thanks, I think. Quill readied her meal and paused to take in the strange winged creature who now called her friend. As a field of stars bloomed over the sky, their campfire conversations deepened. He's all I have. If I lose him, I don't know what I'll do, confided Quill. Adurin looked down at his wings. If I help you find him, can you help me? <sighs> if we can, we will, Starling. I mean, Adurin. Although Quill was far from the safety and comfort of her nook in the cottage, her exhaustion led her into a deep sleep. Hey, Ghostface. A lot of folks have been waiting for a reader like you to return. I know I have. I'm going to scout the castle up ahead. Keep her safe, okay? For both our sakes. Durin was nowhere to be found, but looming high on a distant bluff was the castle, a stark reminder of what mattered most. Quill drew a deep breath and readied herself for the journey ahead.
she'd seen this view before, in a drawing from her uncle's library. Being here made her heart flutter and then sink. If you enjoyed this chapter, please consider subscribing. And wait, don't stop the story there. Click on the video thumbnail to find out what happens next.